All right, good evening, people. This is uh, Mark Randall III, your local neighborhood blurtist, and this is The Problematic Life and Times. Today we will be talking about Mylan and the EpiPen, uh, your First Amendment rights versus social media, and Anthony Weiner. So uh, let's just dive right on in and, uh, and get to it. So the EpiPen, as most people with allergies do know, EpiPens can be crucially crutch in saving someone's life um the epipen was bought by a company called myland in 2007 in the time in 2007 the epipen was actually costing roughly about 100 bucks for two pens they can get roughly 50 bucks per pen since 2007 up until most recent times the price has gone up over 600 dollars for the same packaging of the two epipens um, which is a significant increase. And I know a lot of people would think, uh, well, you know, that's inflation. Um, you know, sometimes you may want to increase your prices uh, due to the increased living of your life. Things that cost the same in 1988 doesn't, doesn't it's not the same as it cost in, you know, 2010. Uh, but even with those um, cost measures in mind, uh, the increase from 100 to 600 is um, is astronomical, and it's it's pretty disgusting if you think about it overall. So, what is their grounds for this? What 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 foundings like what what feet do they have to stand on to you know justify this hike? And um, well, you know what? Let's just dive into it. Uh, the first thing that should be known is they have a monopoly on this system for all intended purposes. Um, people who can't afford um, Myland's EpiPens, um, there is no other company currently for you to go to get um, an EpiPen. Uh, there was one company uh, previously, but they were recently shut down due to manufacturing errors. And there's another company that's making a generic cheaper EpiPen, but they are currently um, tied up by the um, FDA. So they have a stronghold on this corner market for this life-saving um, you know, device. Well, who is the CEO of this company and who is the person in charge of making these decisions? It's very interesting. Her name is Heather Breach, and she is the daughter of West Virginia Senator uh, Joe Manich the third and people are like well that doesn't sound too suspicious but it actually is very suspicious um being a senator has an, a large amount of influence um within america some would argue that they're more influential than president because senators can hold their term for like ever like it's not like four years and they're done eight years and they're done if they were on a good run uh, they can literally hold on to it almost up until their dying day, um, for the most part. So, uh, her her dad being this senator, this senator and this lobbyist also puts things into play with the amount of money that was donated to um, the pharmaceutical industry. And uh, the company, before she got in the holes with it, uh, donated several million dollars to the university that Heather went to to get her MBA. So, I think Daddy bought her an MBA. Like, I don't think it's come out and said that, but it does look extremely suspicious on um on like that, on that case. Um, since this news has come out and everyone has painted um, the CEO, Heather, as a uh, like a villain, almost like the guy who bought up the um, the AIDS medication and uh, jacked up the price. Um, people kind of put her in the same category as him. And while I don't think they belong in the same category, they're definitely in the same book. I, the main difference between what she did and what um, the guy, I think his name was like Skrillex or something. Uh, she did hers gradually. She did hers slowly over time, over like a over like like a nine year spike she's you know gradually increased this drug and kind of nudged out the competition um since this report has 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 gone viral if you will and people have more awareness of the price of epipens um she has announced that she will be increasing financial assistance 
to patients to help them get the EpiPen, which is, um, which is, which is stupid. Um, because by increasing the financial assistance to the patients, that's not a real, um, that's not a real clear and, you know, determined thing to say. Like, what is your increased assistance? Maybe you were giving them $50, now you're giving them 75 Or maybe you're giving them $100 after they purchase two. Technically, that, that all counts as an increase in financial assistance. But if the, if the EpiPen has gone from 100 to 600 and you're giving people a $75 voucher, like, that doesn't help them. That doesn't help the cause at all. Um, they're also rolling out a $300 generic EpiPen um, later on this year, which is extremely suspicious, and you should be aware and, and be aware of it. Because how is it possible that they're able to make one for six hundred dollars, but then also sell one for three hundred dollars, which is half the price? But you still get two EpiPens, and one is generic, and one is the Mylan brand. But they're both made by the same company, so I don't know what is the exact difference. It's not like a luxury car where. One car has um, TVs in the headrest and it has wireless while the other car is something that's just stock modeled. Both of these pins are injected into your body to save your life from an allergic reaction. So they should basically both have the same consistency, give or take. So I don't understand how possibly one could cost 600 and one could cost 300 And um, I, some people may argue, want to argue the fact that maybe the ingredients that it that that go into making these EpiPens, maybe they've become harder to find or they've become rare or they've become expensive over the years. And for all for all the research that I found on it, it's pretty much has remained the same. And the EpiPens themselves actually cost under a dollar to make. So it's a it's an it's an insane amount of profit. And like how much profit are we talking here? Well last year the Myling Corporation um, reported in $870 billion of net profit, of net income from last year. $870 billion is a lot of money. Um, that's a huge amount of money. And this is one of the main problems I have with these major corporations is corporations are man-made. They are definitely... They, they're, they don't have... They don't have any connection to humanity. And a corporation's sole purpose is to make money. To fuck everyone else and make money. That is that that is the main primary for any corporation. I've I've never met a corporation that did not want to make profit. And this it's the the bottom dollar is they're gonna they're gonna step on whoever they need to step on to make that said dollar. So it is definitely um, very important that you stay aware of this of this type of thing. Like corporations weren't made in nature; it was very much something man-made. Uh, it's almost like a Skynet thing in a way, where we created something that's 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 devouring us. And it's not like we created it; not like you know us regular everyday working Joes went out there and made corporations. Um, it was created by humanity, and it was created by the one percenters who won't be affected by this so that's that's a travesty and I believe in the upcoming years the healthcare situation is just going to become more and more outrageous and it's just going to be something to you're definitely going to have to you know be aware of it and, and, and stay conscious uh, moving on to our next subject uh, I want to talk a little bit about the first amendment and uh, social media and I always see, especially on Twitter, Twitter is such a Twitter is such a weird place. Twitter, Twitter is like going to your aunt's house that you don't visit very often, but she has like, I don't know, maybe like that crazy cousin who lives in the basement and they won't they won't leave the children around them because they're not exactly sure what he's capable of. That's what Twitter is like. Like, it's a great place to go to get information and to connect with people. But it's also like a deep, dark underbelly of just like hatred and bigotry and sexism. And surprisingly, very patriotic place as well. Um, 
a lot of people on Twitter like to argue their First Amendment, their First Amendment right. And I don't think people really know what the First Amendment is. Like, people just see First Amendment, they just hear freedom of speech. Um, what the First Amendment does not include is um, a platform for you to spit out your freedom of speech. Basically, the First Amendment, if you were to look it up, is to express beliefs and ideas without unwarranted government restriction. The big, the big component there is government restriction. So if you're on Twitter and you're saying some, you're saying some hateful shit, and hitter and Twitter wants to ban you, you can't argue your First Amendment because Twitter is not a government entity. Now, if you were on the white, if you were like, you know, in America and you were just on the streets and you were screaming out hateful hateful shit and you know the government came and banned you from speaking hatefully um then that's a violation of your first amendment um but twitter is not is 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 not a a a platform designated to you it is not a privilege for you to use at all even though they market themselves as a place for free speech they do have a common a common rule, a, a common practice and rules agreement that people sign on to when they go on to Twitter, the things that no one ever reads when they sign these agreements. And it does say that you can't, you're, well, you're not supposed to be able to basically troll, like create multiple sites for the purpose of hate speech. And just because you want to say something hateful or um, sexist or just overall gross and ugly toward another person does not necessarily mean that your speech is to be protected. Um, and why am I getting into this? Well, it's very simple. This weekend, um, Leslie Jones was hacked. And she wasn't just hacked on a level of um, a nude photo was released or two. She was hacked on like a major, a major security breach level where it went beyond, beyond cool. And not that any type of hacking is cool, not that putting your personal business out there is cool, but um, her photographs, her private photographs of her doing um, adult business was released out into the world. Um, But it was also released out into the world was her driver's license, um, her address. Um, her passport information. These are all, you know, super, super personal documents and items that you wouldn't necessarily, like, not only necessarily want released to the world, but they just shouldn't be released um, without your consent and definitely not to the world of, of Twitter. So this is this is huge. And a lot of people who um, like to combat these um, social justice warriors and these lot of these, um, like, these people who are fighting for their First Amendment and they believe in freedom of speech, somehow believe that Twitter is a safe space for them to go and spit out bigotry without there being any repercussions. And that is the beauty of the First Amendment is, yeah, you can say whatever you want, but you are also held held responsible for the shit that you say. So if you say some wild shit and someone checks you, like them checking you is not not in direct conflict with your First Amendment, right? now, Leslie Jones, a lot of people are coming for her on Twitter, um, mainly because of this guy named Milo. Uh, a while back when, oh man, this dude, Milo Yiannopoulos, um, he's kind of, he was, he was a writer, he had this large following on Twitter, and he was notorious for... Um, I guess Twitter jumping people. And what he would do is he would attack a person on Twitter. And because he has such a large following of hateful troll people, they would jump on the bandwagon and attack you as well. So what does that mean? So that means that when the Ghostbusters re- when the Ghostbusters um, movie was coming out with the all-female cast... A lot of people were going at Leslie Jones because she does not fit into your traditional model of beautiful in America. She's a large black woman who has dominant African features. 
She has dark skin. She has short hair. And, you know, 